The title of today's message is Standing on the Promises, Part 2. God has made us many promises in His Word. Now, last week we talked about uh, unconditional promises that God has made us. Now, this week we're going to talk about conditional promises that He's made, uh, made for us in the Word of God. One of the first promises is salvation that God has made for us. Now, the word, when we say you're saved, the word saved in the Greek is sozo. It is to be safe, to save, to deliver, to protect, to heal, to make whole. Jesus wants to make you whole. Now, Scripture tells us in Acts 16.31, And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved and thy house. So you say, Pastor Joe, what's the condition with that? Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe in the Lord. You know, as you believe, God wants to save you and your whole family. Recently, I was telling our church, many years ago, I was driving down the road and I saw a bumper sticker and it said, Acts 16.31, we believe Acts 16.31. And I honked a horn, I honked a horn, and I rolled down my window and I shouted out to him. I said, hey, what's Acts 16.31? And they went, mm, I don't know. <laughs> they didn't even know what they had on their car. But it made me go look it up. And at the time, I realized God wanted to save me and my whole house. Now, one of the laws is the laws of faith. Be it done according to your faith. And God wants to bring in the whole household. When I got saved, I was the very first one in our family. I often say I was uh, the black sheep of the family. God saved me. And then my whole family, one by one, began to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. My Father's in heaven today. Glory to God. And he had given his life to Jesus Christ. Now, here's another scripture, the promise of God. Romans 10 and 9 says, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So what's the condition? Confess and believe. Now, we often think of confession as, well, I'm going to go confess my sins. But when you confess Jesus as the Lord of your life, verbally with your mouth, out loud, you're saying, Jesus, be my Lord. I confess you as the Lord of my life. I often tell the story of a Bible study where a man had gone for six months, and he was a very shy man, and he didn't want to stand up publicly or say anything publicly. And the, the men that were going to the prayer meeting went to the pastor, and they said, Pastor, uh, this man's been coming to the meetings, but as far as we could tell, he's really not saved yet. And the pastor said, has he confessed Jesus as Lord of his life yet? They said, no, he's just been coming to the prayer meetings. So at the prayer meeting, the pastor said, sir, would you please stand up? He said, have you ever confessed Jesus as the Lord of your life? And the man said, no, I don't, I don't want to do that. I, I'm just embarrassed. He said, the Bible says you must confess him as Lord of your life. So the man said, okay. And he said, Jesus, I confess you publicly as the Lord of my life. And when he did that, his whole countenance changed. And everybody noticed it. And he realized, I've been born again because he, he did it according to the word of God. He confessed and believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, belief by itself just won't save you. You must confess him with your mouth as the Lord of your life. You know, the Bible even says in James 2.19, Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well, the devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou, O man, know that faith without works is dead? You know, I often say the devil has a testimony. You say, what is that, Pastor Joe? You read in the Bible when the devil saw Jesus, they would cry out and say, I know who you are, the Holy One of God. They knew who he was. And that's a funny thing. We got so many people that don't realize who he is. Some people will think he's a good man or a prophet, but even the devil knows he's the son of the living God, God in the flesh. He cried out and said, I know who you are. <laughs> and the Bible says Jesus would not suffer the devils to speak. So even the devil testified to who he is. The only time that, that an enemy ever told the truth is when he pointed out. So that's the one. That's the one. I remember him in glory. See, he was kicked out of heaven. That's a really quick foot when he rebelled. He got kicked down and thrown from heaven as lightning. And he remembered who he was in glory. He said, I know who you are. That's right. So the devil knows who he is. Now, Romans 10, 13 says... For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's healing in the name of Jesus. There's glory and anointing in that name. You know, you can say God to as many people as you want to say, but when you say Jesus, there's an atmosphere change. There's power in that name. I heard the story many years ago about a Christian friend and a Muslim man. 
And they went to visit a person who was demonically oppressed or possessed. And the Christian man was praying with this person, and he had his Muslim friend there. And he said, look, I have to go off for a few minutes. I want you to sit with him. Don't do anything. Just sit with him, and I'll be back. So in the interim, while his Christian friend had left, the Muslim man was standing there, and he put his hand on the person's head, and he said, in the name of Muhammad, I say, come out. And the man was none better. But then the Muslim friend said, in the name of Jesus Christ, come out. And the man was instantly delivered, and the Muslim friend was converted to Jesus Christ. There's power in the name of Jesus. It's not Muhammad. It's not Buddha. It's not Harry Krishna and all the other gods and foolishness. It's Jesus Christ. There's one way to heaven, one salvation, and there's power in that name, healing in that name. Now, the Bible says, neither is there salvation in any other. There's salvation in no other. No other way. It's not your good works that are going to get you to heaven. God's not going to weigh your good works and your bad works. No, it's by grace alone through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. I was telling our church a story uh, many years ago about a man who lived in the town and it would take six policemen to hold this man down. He was always fighting, he was always drinking, and he was always causing a lot of ruckus. And he came into a little church where a man was preaching. And he used this very scripture in Romans 10, 13. He said, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And while he was preaching, the man walked to the altar and he shouted out. He said, Jesus, Jesus. And the preacher said, what are you doing? You're messing up my service. And the man said, I'm doing what you said. And then the preacher realized he wasn't even believing what he was preaching because the man acted on what the preacher said. And that man turned out to be a fine Christian. You know, right here in the middle of the broadcast, whatever your need is right now, where you're sitting, call on the name of the Lord. If you're not saved and you're watching me right now, call on the name of Jesus right now. Call out to that name. If you're sick in your body, call out to that name in Jesus' name. Call out to him. If you're in any kind of addictions, if you're bound by drugs, call on the name of Jesus. There's healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus. You know, years ago at our church, we had a, a, a drug program. And I know there was a man that had come in in a drug program and he had gotten really sick because he had, uh, he had a problem where he had uh, injected his veins with sewer water and he had all kind of sickness in his body in different, different times. And I remember I had prayed for him and we hadn't even, in the name of Jesus, we hadn't even thought about it. We just prayed for him. He asked me to pray. Well, he called me a year later and said, I forgot to tell you that God healed me. God had healed me. That's a belated praise report that God had healed him that day when we prayed. And it was a year later when he called me to tell me about it. See, there's healing in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, Scripture tells us in 1 Corinthians 15, 1, still talking about the promise of salvation, Paul writes to us and he says, Now, brothers, I want to remind you of the gospel that I preached to you, which you received and on which you have taken your stand. He said, by this gospel, you were saved. And we can get excited there. Woo, I'm saved by the gospel. And then he says, if, if you hold firmly to the word I preached to you, Otherwise, you've believed in vain. See, we've got to hold firmly to the word of God and not be moved. There's been many men of God that have gotten off track and believe things that are not according to the word of God. We've got to hold fast to the word of God. The Bible says, take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine, for in so doing, you'll save yourself and them that hear you. You know, there was a popular preacher that because he couldn't reconcile, he had a, he had a friend that was involved in homosexuality. And he couldn't believe that, that uh, God would exclude him from heaven for living a lifestyle of sin. And we're not picking on one sin. You can live in fornication. And fornicators, whoremongers, adulterers, effeminate will not inherit the kingdom of God. See, that's what God said. We're just repeating what he said. We've got to walk with Jesus and let his blood wash away all our sins and walk in the newness of life. Become a new creature in him and walk with him. That's what God said in his word. Well, he started preaching that everybody goes to heaven. Friend, God wants everybody to go to heaven. And like I had said recently, God will love you all the way to hell. In the open arms of the Savior, many people are lost in the fiery pits of hell because they reject uh, Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. There's one salvation, one blood that's been shed to pay the price for us, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. He loves you, but friend, he'll love you all the way into hell if you rebel against him and stay in a lifestyle of sin. Come to Jesus, believe on him, and be saved, and repent of your sins 
And Paul goes on to say, for what, I, for what I received, I passed on to you as of first importance that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that He was buried and raised on the third day according to the Scriptures. So what's the condition? We've got to hold firmly to the Word of God and not be moved by our feelings, by our circumstances. We've got to hold fast to the Word of God. Beloved, it doesn't matter what your sin is, drug addiction, fornication, homosexuality, lesbianism, uh, whether you're a liar, a thief, whatever your sin is, we've got to repent of that sin, turn to Jesus with all of our heart, and get blood washed. And I want to tell you, if you're struggling with a sin today, you're struggling with that thing, the battle is the Lord's, call on the name of Jesus, and He will help you overcome the bondages of sin in your life. Because the Bible said, He came to save us from our sins. Sin is a spiritual state that brings destruction, brings sorrow, brings heartache. But the presence of God in our life through the blood of the Lamb will bring you joy, peace, and glory in your life. He'll deliver you from those bondages all through the blood of the Lamb. Now, one of the promises of God is as believers, when we sin, God has promised to forgive us. Scripture tells us in 1 John 1 and 9, if we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins. Now, forgiveness is great when we do something. Say, God, please forgive me. Wash me in your blood. But the scripture goes on to say, He will cleanse us from all unrighteousness. You see, we're all in a progression. And when we mess up, you know, God will pick you up. God's never kicking you out. When you mess up and say, God, forgive me, 70 times 7 for the same thing in the same day, God will forgive you. Years ago, I heard a story of a, an older man and a young Christian. An older man got up and stood in front of the church and he said, In 40 years, I've never been down as a Christian. 40 years, I've never been down. And there was a young man that had heard him say this, and this young man was struggling with sin in his life. He kept falling and getting up, falling and getting up, falling and getting up. And he went to the older man, he said, what's the secret? He said, sir, I, I've been struggling with sin, and, and I keep falling and getting up, and, 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 and sometimes I, I'm just so down, I, I just don't know what I'm going to do. He said, young man, in 40 years I've never been down. I've only been up or getting up, but I've never been down. See, get up. Get up. There's only up and getting up. If you've been knocked down, just get up. Just get up. There's only two positions for the child of God. It's up and getting up. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you get knocked down, just rise up through the power of the Holy Spirit and God's strength will help you. Now, the scripture tells us in Matthew 6 and 14, this is concerning forgiveness. He said, for if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their sins, the Father will not forgive your sins. You see, forgiveness is you don't give, you don't get. You don't have the right to hold something against somebody else when God has forgiven you. You know, unforgiveness is like this. You drink the poison and expect the other person to die. You drink the poison and expect them to die. That's why the Bible says to pray for those that have persecute you, persecuted you and despitefully used you. Some people not only use you, but they despitefully use you. And forgiveness is more for you than it is for them. You release that person and you can't be offended with somebody you pray for. There's a story of a woman that had been to every healing evangelist around America. They had laid hands on her and she couldn't get healed for anything. And uh, she was going to one of the evangelistic meetings, believing God for a healing. And God just pricked her spirit to show her that there was an area of her life where she hadn't forgiven her brother. So she got on the phone and called him up and said, Look, it's been 15 or 20 years that I haven't talked to you, and, and I, I just want to tell you that I'm sorry for all that I've done. And the brother said, No, I'm sorry. And, and they finally agreed they were each 50-50 sorry and responsible for what had happened. And, you know, she went off to sleep after that phone conversation. And when she woke up, she went to the meeting, and she found that all the symptoms in her body were gone. Because she forgave and released him, her healing flowed. Sometimes, and I use the term, you can be spiritually constipated by unforgiveness in your life. It'll shut down the blessings of God in your life when you don't forgive and release others. You've got to learn how to forgive and release others. Forgiveness is when you give it, you're going to receive it. See, Jesus on the cross, he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And when he was on the cross, they gave him some gall to drink, and the Bible says that Jesus spit it out. And once the Lord had spoke to me and he said, Son, don't ingest the bitter things that people feed you. See, see, Jesus spit out that bitter thing. Here he was, standing up between heaven and earth, between God and man. And the Bible says, he even cried out, My God, my God, 
Why have you forsaken me? Because God had turned his back on him because he became our sin. And, and man had turned his back on him. And then here it is, a bitter thing was given to him and he spit it out and didn't ingest it. Friend, you may be in a place where someone's trying to feed you a bitter thing. Your wife betrayed you. Your husband betrayed you. Many people might have betrayed you. Don't ingest the bitterness, but keep giving away love for what you sow, you're going to reap. And Jesus kept sowing love to everyone. And you see, those people that he sowed love to in that day, many of them didn't love him back. But what you sow, you're going to reap. Now, we all love Jesus. He kept sowing love, and he's still reaping love so keep sowing love and don't ingest the bitter things that people try to give you now god has promised us in the word of god healing for our body one of the promises that most people overlook is in ephesians 6 and 1 it says children obey your parents in the lord for this is right honor your father and mother which is the first commandment with a promise now here's the promise that it may go well with you and that you may enjoy long life on the earth now god has promised us if we will honor our parents it's going to be well with you and you're going to live long on the earth if you want an insignificant life dishonor your parents if you want a life troubled with with illness and many things dishonor your parents but if you honor your parents the bible says you're going to have wellness in your life and a long life maybe your parents have passed away father you can you can say father i honor their memory that you didn't have a chance to do it, and you can claim this promise. I often tell everyone, it's going to be well with me, and I'm going to live a long life because I honor my parents. One has went home to be with the Lord. My mother's still here, and I still honor her today. And I'm going to live long, and it's going to be well with me because God has said it in his word. Wellness means health. Wellness means healing. Wellness means prosperity. And you can claim this when you've honored your parents. So that's the condition. Honor your parents. Now, the word honor means to esteem. And uh, uh, dishonor is the opposite. It's like to blow off what they say. It's like blowing off a mist, or blowing off a, a steam. So in other words, when you just blow them off and say, oh, that's my old man or my mom, and you give them uh, no heed, that's dishonoring them. But when you honor them, God promises you wellness in your life. Now, James 5 and 14 says this. Is any sick among you? Let him call for the elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer face shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. If they committed sins, they shall be forgiven him. You know, many times we've had empty hands being laid on empty heads. People didn't know why they were getting prayed for. Just somebody laid hands on them, prayed for them, and nothing happened. But when you come for prayer, come with the expectation of a miracle. What do you believe in God for, friend? What do you believe in God for in a miracle? When hands are laid on you, and uh, we anoint with all here at the church, and we believe God for miracles. We believe God heals. We believe God delivers. Now, one of the blessings it says, if you committed sins, you'll be forgiven. And you'll be healed in your body when we anoint with oil and the prayer of faith is released over your life. So what's the condition? The anointing of oil and the prayer of faith. I'd like to invite you to our church. If you need a physical healing in your body, come visit us on Sunday at 10 a.m. And we'll lay hands on you and anoint you with oil in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to believe for your deliverance, to believe for your miracle. Whatever it may be. Are you troubled by uh, demonic attacks on your life? Come and we'll pray for you and bring deliverance to your life and get you set free from the, from the bondage of Satan and demonic influence or demons, whatever it may be. We'll pray and get you delivered in Jesus' name. Now, there's another promise of healing in the Bible. It's Proverbs 4, Proverbs 4 and 20. He said, My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart, for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their flesh. Now the word in the Hebrew for health here is marpe. It is medicine to your flesh. God's word is medicine to your flesh. Now, you know, you go to the doctor and praise God for doctors. They give you the medicine, but it won't do any good if you put it on the shelf. Now, many of us take our Bible, we take it out on Sunday, and we put it on the shelf the rest of the week. We need to feast on the Word of God daily. There's healing in the Word. There's life in the Word. There's deliverance in the Word. There's prosperity in the Word. It's all in the Word. And especially if you're physically sick, you can go into the Word of God and ingest God's healing Word into your body, and you'll receive your miracle. Now, what's the condition of receiving uh, your miracle from this scripture? It's one, you have to attend to the word. When you attend to something, that means you take care of it. 
If you don't attend to your grass, it'll be two feet high. Your lawn won't be cut. You're not attending to it. But if you're attending to it, it'll be well cut and trimmed. You need to attend to the Word of God. Give the Word of God your time. Incline thy ear unto my sayings. You know, when somebody whispers something and it's a secret, we incline our ear. What did they say? What did they say? You want to know. Incline your ear to the Word of God so you can hear what God's saying to you and the promises that God has for you. Here's the next part of the condition. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep your eyes looking into the Word of God. Every single day, keep the Word in front of you. Don't look, uh, don't look at the physical problem that you may be facing. I know what the doctor said. I know what this one said. But the Bible says, whose report will you believe? Keep your eyes focused on the report of the Lord. Keep your eyes focused on the Word of God. That's the good news. You know, again, praise God for doctors, but they're just practicing. Thank God for the wisdom that they have. But Jesus is the healer. Jesus is the deliverer. Focus on the word of God. Keep your eyes on his word of promise for you, and and you'll receive your miracle. The Bible says, let not your eyes depart from them. And here it is, keep them in the midst of thine heart. Here's the fourth principle. You've got to keep the word of God in your heart. You know, David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. You've got to take his promises and put them in your heart. So the four principles for this healing in your life, attend to the word, incline your ear, keep your eyes in the word, and keep them in the midst of your heart. Now, Scripture also says in another promise of healings in Mark 16 and 17, it says this, and these signs shall follow them that believe. Now, it didn't necessarily say they'll follow the preacher, or follow the teacher, but them that believe, and that's every Christian who believes in the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, in my name shall they cast out devils. Now, if you want to be healed, many times a devil can cause sickness and disease. Now, if, you, if you're going to be involved in healing, you've got to deal with demonic presences sometimes that cause sickness in people's lives. And, and the Bible shows you a woman that was bowed down in the Gospels, and Jesus called her a daughter of Abraham that was bound or bent over. And he cast the devil out that was causing that sickness, and she was instantaneously healed. So he says, in my name, you'll cast out devils. They will speak with new tongues. And verse 18 says, they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So I often tell people when hands are laid on them, from this moment on, begin to confess with your mouth, I am recovering, I am recovering. Hands have been laid, and I am recovering. Because the Bible says you'll recover. It didn't necessarily mean you'll jump up instantly with that miracle. According to your faith, be it done unto you. But many times, the recovery is happening. So right now, right now, beloved, where you're at, we'll do it like this. Lay hands on yourself right now. You're a believer. Put your hand on your head right now. And I decree over you, in the name of Jesus Christ, we lay hands on you by faith right now. And we decree your healing on you right now. And from this moment on, you are recovering in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Scripture tells us in Mark eleven twenty three, Jesus had said, For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Now, listen to how many times I say the word say in this scripture. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea. Now, your mountain may be a sickness. It may be an infirmity. maybe may be something in your life. Whatever it may be, you've got to speak unto it. Be thou removed, be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart. Now the word of God will work with doubt in your head, but not doubt in your heart. Doubt your doubts and believe your beliefs. When the devil says, it's not going to work, say, I doubt that devil. I doubt your doubt. You'll just get them all confused. The devil will be saying, he doubted my doubts. Just doubt your doubts and believe your beliefs, right? And shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. I'm here to tell you, positive or negative, don't prophesy negative things. Don't repeat what the devil's saying. Don't repeat the bad report. Say what God is saying. Say the positive word of faith. Speak the word of healing. Speak to your mountain and say, be thou removed. And when doubt is screaming in your head, when your your pain is screaming in your body, speak to that thing and say, in the name of Jesus, I decree I'm the healed of the Lord. I speak to that mountain. I speak to that cancer and I say, be thou removed. I speak to that sickness and I say, be thou removed. In the name of Jesus and be cast into the sea and keep decreeing out of your mouth that you're the healed and blessed of the Lord in Jesus' name. Now, what's the condition? That you've got to speak and not doubt in your heart to receive your miracle. Now, the very next verse tells us this in Mark eleven twenty four. 24. 
Therefore, now when it's in the Bible, you read a therefore, it's there for a reason. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire, that's whatever you desire, healing, a miracle, your blessing, when you pray, believe that you receive them, and ye shall have them. You know, I often use the analogy, if I had a $100 bill in my pocket and said, I was going to give it to you, and you know I have the money, you'll start rejoicing. People will start applauding and say, he's Pastor Joe's going to give me $100. You'll start acting like you already got it, just based on the fact that I said I'm going to give it to you. See, many times God, people don't know that God is not only willing, but not only able, but willing to heal you. There was a leper that came to Jesus and he said, if it be thy will, and Jesus said two words, I will, is God's will to heal you. So he's willing and he's able. And when we believe his word, you got to start rejoicing like you have it. Faith takes hold. Faith is the title deed of the blessings of God. And by faith, you take hold of your healing and your miracle and start rejoicing because God said it. And that by faith being the substance of what's hoped for, that miracle is going to manifest in your physical body and in, in your, your situation. So it's condition is you got to believe you receive when you pray and you'll have it. Now, God has promised us prosperity in the Word of God. The Bible says in Luke 6, 38, Give, and it'll be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you use, it'll be measured to you again. So what's the principle of, of prosperity? Is as you give, as you give, it'll be measured back to you. If you give sparingly, you'll reap sparingly. If you give liberally, you'll reap liberally. Now, I want to say this. When I got saved, I began giving away so many things because the Bible says, but God so loved the world that he gave. It's the nature of God to give. And when God's nature came to live in me, I began giving. Friend, I want to tell you something on this broadcast. We're never going to say, send in $100 and you'll get a prayer cloth and you'll get your miracle. We're not going to merchandise the anointing. The anointing has been freely given, paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm here to tell you, whatever it may be in your life now, we pray right now through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. We pray for your healing. We pray for your deliverance. We pray for you and your family, the blessings of God that has been freely bestowed through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. We decree it into your home right now. Blessing, health, healing, deliverance in the name of Jesus. Father, touch this one watching right now in Jesus' name. Friend, I'm out of time this week. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And we'll see you next week.